Hey folks, y'all see the title. Now, I'm there's no fast way around this. A lot of this you're actually going to have to do a lot of your own research. Now, a lot of people know about this and certain things are up uh, for debate, but there are certain things, whether you like it or not, it is what it is. You need air to breathe. You need water to drink. You need food to eat. If you don't, you will die. Well, I don't like this. Okay. It, no air, you'll die. I don't like what, well, no water, you'll die. Y'all know what I'm saying. So anyway, excuse my voice. I've been, uh, I was in, in a full blown doing training and that's almost like a shouting match, shouting over all the loud equipment in the trucks and whatnot. As some of y'all done seen my, um, training videos that you out and about and anyway, so excuse my voice. Now, <clears throat> the only per I know a couple of people talked about this. I know uh, most people most notedly is our dearly departed David Carroll. He talked about it quite a few times. He do it during uh, uh, the I think it was the weekend for the MLK. Like he do the the th uh, triple header and you had to go watch it on uh, in the hole. That's where you would have to go watch it. Uh, mine. I done two, one, I got a warning, then late, then I cleaned out what they wanted and they still flagged it. So what I'll do, I'm going to clean it even more. And what I'm uh, going to do before I get started, well, there are certain things about this that I would already expect you to know if you decide to delve in this. Now, don't take this the wrong way. If you were a rookie, if you were a rookie, hey, we all was rookies at one time. If you were a rookie, then before you start asking a gang of questions, you might want to do a gang of reading, and I'll give it to you. I mean, you're looking at one of them right there. It's from the FBI. Oh, that's the white man stuff. Gotcha. And the stuff that you hold up, this counter was made by who? And promoted by who? On whose platform? Gotcha. Okay. But look, anyway, it's certain things I expect you to know if you're going to tackle this. Like I say, what you see in there, uh, who the big six is, you know, the um, from the 60s. Let me see. Um, um, uh, A. Philip Randolph, um, you know, he was the uh, started that Pullman rail car. Porter's labor union party type type thing, self-avowed socialist. He, was a, he said, look, he, I mean, what did people kill me with that? Somebody will tell you what they are out of their lips from their lips to our ears. And then just cause you don't like somebody else repeating it, you will say that they wasn't that even though they claim said that they was out of their own mouth. Just like that, what does that mean? National German Workers Socialist Party. National, uh, so, yeah, so, what? See, you, oh boy, here we go. Uh, uh, scratch that, scratch that front, scratch, scratch, scratch. But look, anyway, uh, A. Philip Randolph, he was the brainchild. I don't care what nobody say. Anybody that really know, knows. Then, uh, of course, uh, Michael King, Martin Luther King, you know, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, um oh who else what's the that's two number three uh james farmer uh, uh jfj jfj jj james farmer jr um core i know y'all heard of core well core is the congress of racial equality that's what core means uh john lewis the the civil rights icon john congressman john lewis yeah okay gotcha the same one that uh, endorsed um, George Wallace for his last two terms as governor of Alabama when George Wallace was the one that gave Bull Connor the green light, the, the public uh, commissioner, the public safety commissioner to sick the dogs and turn the water hoses on y'all. See, these some sick people. He did. I didn't kill him. But I'm just telling I'm telling you the truth. Just because you don't like it don't mean it ain't true. 
but uh, that was uh, Cor- um, uh, John Lewis was uh, the uh, 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 Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee, uh, SNCC, S-N-C-C, they, call, they pronounce it SNCC, Student Nonviolent uh, Coordination, Coordinating, Coordination? Coordinating is one of the two committee. I'm getting old, y'all. My memory fades. And uh, and the, the National Urban League was Whitney Young Jr. And Whitney Young was a member of uh, LBJ made Whitney Young a member of his inner circle cabinet. Oh, y'all didn't know that. I don't know how you didn't know that. And Roy Wilkins from the NAACP, which I said, the, the Negroes, Alligators, Amoses, Coons, Possums, whatever the hell, what the dude, dude said from the movie Mississippi Burning. But, um, yeah, but uh, man, A. Philip Randolph lived a long time. He died. He died when I was in the eighth grade. I think I, I was getting ready to go to high school. Cause I went to high school and eight. I think I think I was in I was in middle school when A. Philip Randolph died. I remember that because my grandfather was you know civil rights, all the things. Uh, director of the uh, Utley Branch Library in Detroit, Michigan, and all that other stuff. So I was around some political powerhouses. So far as my grandfather and my uncle and and you know, my dad more or less lesser than them two, but anyway. Let's go. Uh, like I say, ain't no short way of doing this. I'll, y'all can go to the FBI's website. You can go yourself and put in COINTELPRO and you see what it says. Uh, the FBI began COINTELPRO Pro, short for counterintelligence program in 56 to disrupt the activities of the Communist Party of the United States. In the 60s, it was expanded to include a number of domestic groups such as the Ku Klux Klan, the Socialist Workers Party and the Black Panther Party. All COINTELPRO operations ended in 1971. And you can believe that if you want to. Um, Well, officially, excuse me, officially it ended in 1971, although limiting in scope about two tenths of one percent of the FBI's workload over a 15 year period, which I actually believe that when you count the heads of all the people that was involved, that's pretty accurate. COINTELPRO was later rightfully criticized by Congress and the American people for abridging First Amendment rights and other reasons. And you can go in and you can click on everybody that they uh, was looking at white hate groups, the new left, Puerto Rican groups, mainly gangs, black extremists and you'll be surprised well you probably won't be uh surprised who's in that list hood wink cuba socialist workers party and espionage programs and you but nick what does that got to do with core snick and king i'm glad you asked i am glad that you asked let's read this piece here from Stanford University. Let me uh, let me get that fell off the screen. Well, he ain't in the way. The text don't go over there. Martin Luther King Jr. Research and Est- Education Institute. Hold on. Let me let me mute myself so I can. <clears throat> I don't want to be rude and cough all in the microphone. Might help if I unmute myself. There'd be a couple of more notables that you can look up on. You know, like Bayard Rustin and uh, James Baldwin and. <laughs> uh even uh, uh even uh malcolm little what and he, he was like man you have to be careful of bringing james baldwin up because he's liable to say anything and he's right but uh show this quick picture because i got this here and you can see there's michael king uh of the montgomery boycott and the birmingham riots backed up by the kennedys David Carroll done a much better job of that one than I did. I I, done, I think I done a decent job, but not to the le- uh, um, to the level that he did. That's Abner Berry of the Central Committee of the Communist Party. This black man right here, 
Uh, number three, this is Aubrey Williams. He's the president of the Southern Conference Education Fund, Incorporated, the transmission belt in the South for the Communist Party. That man right there. And then number four, this man actually had a little bit of coin. Well, a lot of coin. Um, that's Aubrey, oh, excuse me, Miles Horton. He's the director of the Highlander Folk School for Communist Training in Monteagle, Tennessee. These four horsemen of racial agitation, eh, you know, have brought tension, disturbance, strife, and violence in their va- eh, I take you. I take that one with a grain of salt. But that, but those are who they are. Who they are. Then here's the big fish that most people have never heard of. Let me pop a picture of him up on the screen for you. Okay, that's enough. That's Stanley Levinson. Okay, let's read this. It's a short. It's a fast read. I'm I'm pretty decent uh, reader, and you see what it is. He also died when I was in middle school. But see, I will admit, I didn't know find out who he was until I was like in my like mid twenties. My mid twenties is when I first heard of this man here big six i mean they know that they taught that in school i actually went to school when they taught school even though i was in public school they taught school in the 70s okay but uh anyway yeah i'm that old here we go 1956 stanley in 1956 stanley levison a jewish attorney from new york new york began raising funds to support the montgomery bus boycott and became acquainted acquainted with Martin Luther King. Uh, the two men developed a close relationship in which Levison not only advised King, but also aided him with the day-to-day administrative demands of the movement. In 1963, the FBI used King's relationship with Levison, who they believed to be a communist functionary, to justify surveillance of King. Uh, born in New York, uh, May 1912, Levinson studied at the University of Michigan, Columbia University, and the New School for Social Research before earning two law degrees from St. John's University. He's real well read. As treasurer of the Manhattan branch of the American Jewish Congress, <laughs> Levinson became a champion of left wing causes and supported the defense of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. Look them up uh, and the campaign against the McCarran Internal Security Act in the early 1950s. The FBI considered Levison to be a major financial coordinator for the Communist Party in the United States and began to monitor his activities. I'm quite y'all should know who Julius and Ethel Rosenberg are. I'm uh, yeah, please, please tell me, please tell me, you know, hold on a second. I'm going to make this too long. Dang it. You got to run. They were spies. They were killed. They were, they were uh, executed. Uh, died June, uh, born, I uh, forget that. First American civilians to be executed for conspiracy for committing exp- espionage and the first to suffer that penalty during peacetime. Y'all can go ahead and, and read, uh, put plug they name in. They, they pull up real easy, pull up real easy. I knew who they were in school, learned about them in government class in high school. And the two were already active members of the Communist Party at a C- a CPUSA is still an active organization here. OK, so, you know, there we go. So, you know, like I say, if if the ones is in the know or, or know enough that the, the scrape, the, knock the stuff off the surface, you know where you know where we going with this. Everybody else, do some research before you pepper us with a bunch of questions, because a lot of the stuff you read, your answers is right there. All you got to do is read. OK, in the mid 1950s, Levison turned his attention to the civil rights struggle. And in 1956, Levison, Bayard Rustin, there's that name again, Ella Baker, created in friendship an organization to raise money for Southern civil rights activists and organizations, including the Montgomery Improvement Association, MIA. That's a strange name. But um, uh, bum, 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 bum. 
where we go. Together, they formulated the concept of a regional Congress of organizations dedicated to mass action, grounded in nonviolence, an idea that would later develop into the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SCLC. Uh, throughout King's career, career, Leviston drafted articles and speeches for him, prepared King's tax returns, and raised funds for SCLC. In 1958, Leviston helped King edit Stride Toward Freedom and secured a book contract with Harper and Brothers. In almost all instances, he performed the services without compensation. Okay. Never mind. I'll keep going. I'm keep my comments to myself. When King offered payment, Levinson refused. My skills, he wrote King, were acquired not only in cloistered academic environment, but also in the commercial jungle. I look forward to the time when I could use these skills, not for myself, but for socially constructive ends, not means. Ends. His words, not mine. Now, if you don't know the difference between means and ends, that's on you. The liberation struggle is the most positive and rewarding area of work anyone could experience. And you see it got, got the uh, footnote where you can find it. The FBI's interest in Levinson was subtly rekindled in 1959 when the Bureau learned of Levinson's connection with King and the movement. FBI chief and closet dress wearer and women's underwear collector at J. Edgar Hoover believe, oops, did I say that out loud? <clears throat> My bad. I don't know where that came from. Believe that Levinson was a communist agent and, and that through Levinson international communism influenced King's actions. Well, he went to the school and the party and the show and everything, but Hey, you can get a hundred flyers for a buck. And if you pay 30 percent and you had to pay 30 cents for, for postage for them to send them to you, that's a smoking deal. <sighs> he brought this concern to the attention of the attorney general, Robert Kennedy. Heard of that guy? And Harris Wolford uh, was enlisted by the Kennedy administration to warn King to end his relationship with Levinson. But anyway, Kennedy uh, wind up uh, getting out in front of, in front of uh, the King and uh, King and help orchestrating some stuff and protection for the big six and make sure they got paid and, you know, all, all this stuff and bringing, uh, uh, you know, bringing Whitney young into the white house you know, as an emissary of sorts, paid, of course. Um, but anyway, anybody can look this stuff up. Uh, where were we at? Uh, Harris Warford, da, 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 unwilling to lose, okay, unwilling to lose a trusted advisor because of vague allegations, King refused to act on the administration's request for over a year. In March 1962, Robert Kennedy authorized the FBI to begin electronic surveillance of Levinson, including his contact with King. Just before a 22 June 1963 White House meeting with civil rights leader Burke Marshall and Robert Kennedy separately repeated, repeated the warning to King, and this time including a recommendation to also fire Jack O'Dell. King demurred and requested proof of Levinson's threat to national security. After the meeting, President John F. Kennedy took King aside and repeated the request that he ban Levinson and Odell directly. Over the next months, oh, and uh, wait till y'all find out Levinson's connection with, um, with, uh, um, with uh, Shea Guevara, with met letters uh, to Shea Guevara, but y'all gonna have to read the whole thing and figure that out because there's a lot of pages in there, and I, uh, you're gonna have to find it if you want it. It's there if you want it. Seek and you shall find. Over the next month, King debated how to handle the request to cease contact with Levinson. However, value that the administration support for the moment and took the initiative to cut off all visible ties with King. 
He continued to advise King on important matters indirectly, often using Clarence Jones as an intermediary. On October 1963, evidence of the ongoing relationship helped convince Robert Kennedy to approve wiretaps in King's home and office. Got your phone tap. What you going to do? Remember that? Remember that phone tap? What was that? That was Nas and Nas and Dr. Dre, I think, done that uh, phone tap uh, rap song. And uh, da, 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 da. Uh, throughout the 60s, okay, he continued. Okay, throughout the 60s, uh, Levison continued to lend King practical and moral support following the Selma to Montgomery March in 1965. Levison wrote King, for the first time, whites and Negroes from all over the nation physically joined the struggle in a pilgrimage to the Deep South. For Levison, Selma was a turning point. Hell, it was ground zero. In King's status as a leader, it made you one of the most powerful figures in the country. A leader now not merely of Negroes, but millions of whites, Levinston said on the 7th of April, 1965. Oh, and this was also pretty much around the time that James Peck uh, got involved. He's James Peck is the white guy, the tall, slender white guy that you see sitting in the jail. So the pictures, if you've seen uh, sitting in a, the white guy uh, beaten bloody sitting in a jail cell with Martin, with uh, Michael King, Martin Luther King, that's James Peck, okay? He's another stalwart that didn't get a whole bunch of, he's kind of been scrubbed from the, but you know, but you can't scrub them from my memory. Well, they ain't figured out how to do that yet, but I'm quite sure they're going to do it. I'm going to do, wait a minute, let me get me a sip, because <clears throat> I'm telling y'all, I've been yelling and my throat killing me, but. Y'all know who used to do that. Let me get a sip of this. And herbal tea with some ginger in it. <clears throat> uh, lemon, ginger. Uh, what's that? Them uh, rose uh, hibiscus uh, and honey. That's what that is. So feels good, though. Okay, let's go. Where were we at? In early 1967, when King became determined to participate in the public denunciation of the Vietnam War, organized by clergy and laymen con concerned about Vietnam, Levison counseled him to refrain. Levison felt that King's planned speech beyond Vietnam was unbalanced and would have disastrous consequences to SCLC's fundraising campaign and King's personal prestige. After a year after publicly speaking out against the Vietnam War, King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. Andrew Young, another of King's trusted advisors. Oh, uh, well, let me go keep reading and then why, and y'all can look at the picture when I'm done. Another of King's trusted advisors called Levison a few hours afterward to tell him the news. Young wrote in his autobiography that Martin had confided in Stan his worries and doubts and hopes ever since Montgomery and had defied the FBI and the president of the United States for their friendship. I knew he would want to hear from one of us personally. Uh, page number 467 in Andrew Young's um, uh, biography. After the long battle with diabetes and cancer, Levison died at his home in New York City in 1979. All three of them died in 79. Good, you know, but, but hey, it is what it is. Upon hearing of his death, Coretta Scott King called him one of my husband's loyal and supportive friends whose contrib contributions to the labor, civil rights, and peace movements are relatively unknown. No, it's not unknown. A whole bunch of us know about it. Uh, civil rights strategist and you got footnotes here but anyway here's a picture of that on that balcony with a, a couple of people that you might recognize that's all i gotta say i'm not gonna say any more because you know that bot that bot don't be playing and you know as as soon as you think you you good and clean that bot just comes up, 
out of the blue with his bull crap. Ned Taylor, what did we tell you? I am really getting sick of your mess. You have one more chance. One more chance. You will be assimilated. You will conform. I got to go, y'all, before we get in trouble. Hey, rate, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all know how to use the search bar. Bye.